Ali! Ali! Those horrid people are about to talk to the king. We knew that they would, didn't we? Yes. Yes, we did. Father was right. They are all tied together. The Hamleys, the king, even the church. Do you think Father's priest is also in on this? Well, we'll have to find him first. Then we'll know. Oh, look at that handsome young man. Ah, uh, good day, my ladies. So well spoken. And look, he even has a battle scar. <laughs> <laughs> like what you see, handsome. You can ride two of us, young lord, if you can pay. Uh, have you seen a priest? Our father met him here at the Westgate. He owes us money. Oh, you're talking about him. That's where he got all that money. <laughs> what? He even paid for Mary's dress. He didn't want to at first. All she had to do was stroke his bald head. Where is the priest? What's his name? Don't know his name, but he's a regular at that one inn. The Boar, close by the North Gate. Smells like piss there. Shall I teach you, love? How to fuck a man, or a woman. You can make a fortune with that little mouth of yours. But in a year, you'll look like me. <laughs> this is the place, but it looks closed. Um. Excuse me? We're looking for a priest who stole our money. Word is, he comes to this place regularly. A priest? Uh, I, sorry, dear children. I, I don't seem to be able to recall anyone... Uh, anyone who fits that description. But that little stable boy might know. He knows everyone who comes and goes. Oh, where can we find him? When he's not working at the boar, he's doing small chores around town. He's always busy, the little chap. Where's the green cap? It's adorable, I tell you. <laughs> Well, look at that! I knew we'd find you here! They're here! Damn, you lost them! William will not be pleased when he hears this. That's what you get when you work with halfwits. How am I supposed to move this barrel if it's twice as heavy as me? <sighs> Let me help. Very impressive. Thank you for that. I'm always telling them, if you want me to restock your kitchen, don't let them cram the browns to the brim. So, what was it you wanted to know? Um, do you know a monk who frequents the boar a lot? The boar? I used to work there. The boar, the lazy mare, and two private kitchens. You're talking about Father Ralph. Thought the women had sucked him dry, but he always comes back with more money but he only spends it on beer and ladies. Never has a tip for me. <sighs> Where can we find him? He's a priest at St. Michael, one of them churches round here. Which one is it? It's close to the East Gate, but don't look for him inside. He likes to light around in his back alley. Oh, thank you. Pleasure. See you around. Are you Father Ralph? What if I am? Does that mean yes? I guess so. He's the only monk around. What do you want? Well, I am the son of Bartholomew, the Earl of Shiring. 
So? Our father gave you money for safekeeping. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. Now piss off. So you're saying there's no money? Right. But my father said... Your father lied then. We should talk to the sheriff. It'll be my word against the word of a jailed traitor. And now give me some peace. I'm hungry. He's right, isn't he? We need proof that he's lying. Like what? Maybe something he recently purchased that a monk couldn't normally afford. That's smart, Ali. And then? I don't know. At least we'll be sure that he's lying, right? Maybe if we expose him, he'll give in. Are you sure? No, but you can see the guilt eating at him already. Keep an eye on him. I'll have a look around. It's too heavy. Hey! Oh, is this yours? Oh, I didn't think a poor monk could afford something like this. <laughs> Richard, I found it! Oh, no! He took all the money. What now? Don't pretend you didn't see, Monk. I found this under your barrel. You are a thief. That strap proves nothing. You seem very certain of this. Sheriff! Hush, you stupid brats. The sheriff is a bastard. He'll take everything for himself. But first, he'll take your hands. Sheriff or no sheriff, you won't get your money. Ali... This isn't going anywhere. Well, at least we know now that he won't call for help. I warn you, I have friends nearby. If you scream, I will show them your beer-soaked belt and tell them what a thieving liar you are. You wouldn't harm me. Richard, you go over there. What? Why? Make sure no one's watching. He... What? You're a devil! I'm going to cut out your eyes one by one. First, the left eye. No! Oh, oh please don't! Where's the money? Here, here, I got it on me. Where's the rest? Gone. Gone where? I spent it. I'd cut off your ear if I could sell it for a penny. Let's take what we've got and go. Uh, all right. I may come back one day, and then I'll collect what you owe us. You were wonderful, Ali. You scared him after death. Yes, well, now, come on. Father wants us to find Aunt Edith.
On the road to Gloucester, my feet started to bleed. I remembered a cobbler who lived nearby in the town of Haystead who could sell us some boots. But taking the detour would cost us both money and time. The cobbler was a quiet man with little love for children. When I asked for a pair of his cheapest boots, he stared at me, trying to measure my query's worth. Then he lifted his finger and pointed at a pair that would cost us more than half of what we had. The cobbler surveyed us once more. He took in Richard's sword while listening to the impatient but uncommon way I talked. In the end, he held up the boots he'd been working on, unfinished, rough and frayed, then suggested a figure that was lower, but still overpriced. When I removed my clogs, the cobbler caught sight of my tortured feet. He motioned me to hold on, then returned from his hut with a long shred of dirty cloth. I wrapped the cloth around my wounds, then put on the boots, while the cobbler pocketed his coin and silently went back to work. In the afternoon, the sky darkened and the temperature dropped drastically. We considered setting up camp to allow us an opportunity to warm our worn down feet. However, we were already running low on food and would soon need to reach our destination. In the hills, there are a lot of poor small holdings. We asked a shepherd for directions to Huntley. It's just down the road, he answered. I thanked him and gave Richard a hopeful push. It's all burned and... Auntie and Uncle must have left some time ago. Maybe they built their new home nearby. They always had coin enough for a stone house anyway. Maybe this isn't even the right house. It is. How would you know? It's been a long time since we came here with Father. These houses all look alike. Shut up, Hallie. Please. They're gone. Probably killed. Whatever happened to them? We will never find out. It's over. There's no place for us to go. Give up. Good day again. Good Huntley is just down that road. You can't miss it. I know. We just found out that the people we've been looking for aren't there anymore. Oh, that's a shame. Do you know what happened to the owners of that burned down house down the road? It's not Simon you're looking for, is it? Why, yes. A while ago, some knights came to his house. Nasty bunch. Burned it down, said he was part of some scheme against the king, like his brother, the Earl. What happened to Simon and his wife? To know, haven't seen any of them since. I understand. Thank you. 
what are you doing? Getting all the work done. My wife is ill, so I have to do it alone. Needs to be done by nightfall, otherwise I won't get them to Winchester tomorrow. Why are you asking? We were supposed to live here with our uncle and aunt, but since they're gone, we need to find another way to get by. My prayers are with you. We could take the wool to Winchester for you. You could stay at home and look after your wife while we sell your stock. Well, that would be kind of you. But I couldn't trust you to negotiate the right price and bring the money back safely. What if I bought the wool from you? You'd get the money right now and wouldn't have to go to market anymore. And whatever more we can negotiate will be the pay for our travels. Well, that's an interesting thought. But for that to work, you would need to buy my entire stock, and I doubt you have coin for that. Now, let me get back to work. The sun will set soon. How much for one sack? Just name your price. One and a half pounds. I want to see the wool first. All right, have a look. Let's see. Huh, these fleeces are quite thin. I put the cheap ones on top, in case of rain. Mm, the ones deeper down don't look that much better. Well, I couldn't wait for the wool to grow any thicker. My family is hungry and weak. I had to shear my sheep early this year. All right. I can offer you one pound. That's less than what merchants in Winchester would offer. You can't expect me to pay as much as a merchant would. Why not? Look, I'm not only offering you money here, but also the chance to stay here with your wife. You wouldn't have to worry about your wool anymore, because that would be my problem then. But it'll only work if I can sell everything for more than I paid you here. Hmm. You're smart. Well, all right. It's one pound per sack. Here. I'll finish shearing old Mabel here, then bring out the rest I've got. Maybe you also want to talk to the other shepherds around here. They might want to sell too. Ah, all right. Thank you. By the way, there is a man looking for you. He came by just shortly after you. I told him you went to Huntley. What man? Dunno. Brown scruffy hair, beard, black horse. Could be he rode right past you. That old hut is not easy to find. Shall I give him a message if he turns up again? Tell him we left Huntley for good. I will. Now let me get those sacks for you. I wonder what Richard will think of this. I should have involved him with my decision. What did we do wrong, Ali? Why is God punishing us? We did nothing wrong, little brother. It's just the first time we're facing difficulties that other people go through their entire lives. But there is nowhere for us to go. We're commoners now. Commoners who never learned to do common work and... We both swore an oath to Father. If we don't get the Elden back, we will go to hell. We could become wool merchants. What do we know about wool? We know from Meg that a lot of shepherds complain about their walk to Winchester. What if we did that for them? And what about me becoming a knight? Uncle Simon's not the only one who'd take you as a squire. If we collected enough money, we could pay another knight to teach you. 
might work. Right? We've had some bad luck till now, but surely not everyone is a fiend. It'll take some time, but we should be able to gradually increase our income. All we need to do is have a lot of patience and pray to God. Ah! Richard! Lord Amley caught me riding the horse you stole from him. Ah! He told me before I take you back, I can have some fun with you. Ah! Ah! Get away from him! Richard! Richard, are you all right? What happened? <laughs> oh, you're alive! <laughs> you're alive! Why are you crying? <laughs> because... Because we are both alive. Looking back, we'd been lucky that his bones hadn't been broken, and that his ear had healed so quickly after we had burned out the wound. Otherwise, I'm not certain my brother would have survived the attack in Huntley. Once he could walk again, we gathered the few things we had and headed out, counting our blessings and preparing to build ourselves a new life. How's your wound doing? Don't worry, I'm fine. May I ask what you're planning to do with all that wool? Mind showing me a piece of your stock? I'd like to establish the quality before I make any promises. Come on, I need to check the quality. I won't take some without your permission. Hmm, not bad. That's quite some wool you've brought along. I hope you're not planning to set up shop here, too. Meg would kill me if I let you. We came to sell this wool to you, not to compete with you. It comes from the shepherds near Huntley. They gave it to me so they wouldn't have to come here themselves. I see. All right. I'll give you a pound per sack for this. What? Only a pound? Ah, that's a fair price. But that's what I paid the shepherds. This doesn't even make up for the cart, taxes and travelling. Oh. Then you've made a bad business decision. What? I can't pay for your mistakes, can I? You have to handle that yourself. Ali, let me handle this. Your money would not only pay for the wool, but also fund our fight to reclaim our earldom. If you pay us more, I shall never forget that courtesy. I will greatly repay you once I'm back in charge of Shiring. I may even allow you sole access to our own wool production. That's a lofty promise. And it would hardly cost you. So, you two are the son and daughter of the Earl of Shiring? We are. But you're just children. We will make a coin, and I will become a knight fighting for glory and honor until the king grants us back our noble inheritance. 
That may all be very well, but I can't pay you more than what I already offered. Then I'll prove that the wool's quality is worth the price. Just let me look at it once more. <sighs> We've got to work out what signifies high quality. Maybe if we remember what the shepherd said. It's from a good breed of sheep, they said. What else? Um... And other wool looked greasy, not us. It's dry, light and soft. The wool is pretty strong too. It holds together well. That's all I remember. Yeah, me too. Hmm... Have you thought it over? Some sheep produce brittle fibre, but this wool is strong. Its sheep had good, healthy lives. Mm hmm, it's suitable for finer and durable fabrics. Wool is often full of grease and dirt. But this batch was scoured very thoroughly. It's very clean and soft. Hmm, even picky customers would be delighted. That is true. In this weather, some cartloads of wool would arrive damp. I made sure that this is dry and undamaged. It's light and easy to transport. Hmm, and customers are hesitant to buy wet wool. All right, what pricing did you have in mind? Two pounds per sack. Are you insane? That's a little too much. I'd hardly pay that much for a golden fleece. One pound and ten shilling per sack, then. <sighs> well, tell you what, I'll give you one and a quarter pounds for every sack. You've brought up some good arguments. Your wool is exquisite. Of course it is. Ah, uh, but not a penny more, all right? <laughs> That's not enough. I want one and a half pounds. Well, you're not getting that. Or would you prefer to get one pound after all? All right. I accept your offer. Thank you for your business. We've done it, Ali. We've earned 60 pence for each sack. That's five shilling. A whole crown. I know why Meg likes you, Ali Aina. You're just as ruthless as her. I must say, that was impressive. Can I help you? Forgive me, I didn't mean to barge in, but... You are the Lady Aliena of Shiring, are you not? Yes, I am. And I'm Lord Richard, Earl Bartholomew's son. My name is Philip of Gwyneth. I am the Prior of Kingsbridge. Ah, oh, I've heard of you. You helped a lot of people after the Hamleys attacked my father's castle. We only did what was right. I met your father. My father knew many people. Not all of them were his allies. I know. I'd like to invite you to come to Kingsbridge. Our own wool trade has fallen somewhat into neglect, God forgive, but we have plenty of sheep. I am sure we could come to an agreement. You want us to be merchants? You wouldn't work for me. You would work with me. I can see that you are not afraid of hard work. I don't know a single novice who would have been willing to pull a cart like that on his own. My friend, Brother Milius, would be delighted to speak with you. He always goes to markets for our priory. What do you say? I'll consider it. Please, do consider my offer. You will be most welcome in Kingsbridge. It is the least I can do. 
Thank you, Father. Not much later, I found a home in Kingsbridge. I remember when I got there, there was Jack. You! I remember you. You're the boy with no father. Actually, I have two fathers now. Is that so? Yes. Tom Builder and Jack Sherberg. And then the days just went by. Little did I know that the best and the worst was yet to come. <laughs>